Councillor Puglia. Thank you. Uh, I recall when the first presentation was made over a year ago, there was a question, I'm not sure if it has come up tonight, about Toronto, fluoridated, has, uh, and Vancouver is not fluoridated, correct? And Vancouver has actually lower number of cavities. This question was posed the first time. I may even remember your answer. It was, it was because of a healthier lifestyle in Vancouver accounted for the difference, even though the water was not fluoridated. Councillor, I don't remember my answer either. But, okay, well, um, I'm asking the question let me again. Let answer it for you now. Um, that goes back to the exact question that Councillor Hebert asked, and, and you're correct. It comes back to these three areas, one of um, personal oral hygiene and keeping plaque away from the teeth, secondly, the whole nutritional issue, and then thirdly, how you're getting fluoride to the teeth. Now, in um, Vancouver, I would suggest to you, and this probably came out the last time, um, it is the highest dentist population ratio um, of anywhere in Canada. So in other words, access to care is very easy for people in Vancouver. So if they want to go, um, and this was one of the things they looked at because they did look at alternatives in places like Halt and Two, um, in terms of getting fluoride to people different ways. But in Vancouver, I would suggest to you, because of the dentist population ratio, there is a higher, in fact, I know there is a higher utilization um, of people going for dent. So now your topical fluorides are up. If the nutrition is slightly better, um, then that would help, and if the oral hygiene... So again, it's because it's multifactorial, um, you have to look at all the different components. But remember, y you could do the same argument. You could say that um, the, the decay rates in some areas in Newfoundland are quite high because they're not fluoridated, whereas in Toronto they're lower. The decay rates in Toronto have been coming down, but again, we're seeing the same issue with a slight bounce back. Thank you for your answer. But the point that remains that I'm trying to make is that Vancouver, large population, large urban population, it has the same age groups and needy groups uh, and underprivileged kids and, and so on like Toronto has. Vancouver is not fluoridated. Water is not fluoridated. Lower cavities. The explanation being given is there are a number of other factors that come into play. But what we heard tonight is fluoridation is the best option. That's and it correct. may be, but there are other factors that come to play. Even though Vancouver is not fluoridated, it has a, actually a lower incidence of cavities. So why not focus on those areas that are proven effective in a large metropolitan area like Vancouver. This way prevent him from exposing everybody to whatever risk may or may not be there. I'm not saying there is or there isn't. We're trying to balance risk and benefits. Given that, and given that there is substantial evidence that other factors now come into play. And that question has come up before from the, to the Thunder Bay District Health Unit and their efforts in preventive dental, um, um, preventing the health uh, dental decay by the four, uh, five, uh, the remedies or return to the public health strategies that were successful in the past. And besides the renewed campaign with the water fluoridation of this topical fluoride application, school oral health education programs, brushing, flossing, proper diet. We already know what those other um, efforts could be. My question is why there is so much emphasis on fluoridation when Vancouver proves that other factors have just as important a factor to play. Are we going to the lowest common denominator and saying that's the easiest solution, let's go and fluoridate and therefore we'll have the benefits? Councillor, that's a good question, and no, we're not doing that. Um, what I can tell you is that if you speak to the dental director in um, British Columbia, which I did, Dr. Malcolm Williamson, 
When um, they were starting to see fluoride levels low in, in British Columbia, he instituted provincially a very large uh, children's program which cost a lot of money because they do a lot of preventive services in the schools. And you could certainly look at that. Um, if I could give you the numbers, because we've talked about this a number of times, and, and it, it should help you with this, because that's a good question. If you look at water fluoridation, water fluoridation will reduce dental decay by 20 to 40 percent. If you look at toothpaste, toothpaste will reduce dental decay by up to 25 percent. And if you look at fluoride varnishes, that will reduce dental caries by about 15 to 25 percent. Now, what you're saying is absolutely right. If you can combine all three of them, and more with it, your, your goal would be to get dental caries down to zero. Um, if you have the money to start high powered, and this is what they looked at in Hamilton, and this is why they decided to keep fluoridation, because basically they found, and you saw Dr. Ito had some of those numbers, and you could easily do this analysis for Thunder Bay, but it's a good point. Um, but when you're looking at toothbrushing programs, it's about three times the cost of water fluoridation, and when you're looking at direct topical fluorides, it tends to be about 10 times, five to 10 times, depending on the um, area and the supply of dentists and dental hygienists. So ideally, it, what you're saying would be the best of all worlds, get fluoridated water in and then try and get people to brush their teeth more and try and get fluoride varnish done, and you may get decay rates down considerably low, and that's what you would want to do but you're gonna need big bucks, and that's what Malcolm Williamson had to do in Vancouver to get the numbers down, because he had to plug hygienists through the schools there, um, and it, it did work. Uh, I'm not in a position to refute what you're saying, that someone spent sufficient amounts of money or developed a program, a healthcare program, that was able to bring down I. And that's why I think, uh, with all due respect, uh, the, the presentations tonight being, we are not in a position to counteract your science because we're not scientists. It would have been uh, much more balanced if there was someone else on the opposing side that would have the science in order to counteract some of the points. We're in a position to make, uh, to receive one side of the story as, as good as your presentation have been and they're very informative and we appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, you see the dilemma, see, there is a point being made here, there is substantial evidence with the Vancouver situation, but I have, I'm in no position to counteract what you're saying. The person who you're saying, someone, someone you mentioned the names, I don't know who they are, put enough effort to achieve those results. And um, that's very easy to, to confirm, Councillor, because you can look at the BC programs. They have a lot of in-school programs, and they invested a lot in their prevention. And, and that's a good thing, um, but it's very costly. And again, as I say, ho both Halton and Hamilton looked at exactly the same thing, uh, and they found it was, you know, you're looking at three to five times the cost than if you put your fluoride in, and you're still only looking at the same result. I mean, I, I didn't see the report that your colleagues from the city, your, your staff in the city presented to you, but it sounded to me from dealing with the international groups that I do, that their numbers in terms of the annual costs are quite fair. Um, the American Dental Association gives a number of 50 cents to $3 per capita per annum, depending on the size of the community. And these guys are coming in on two. And if you can do that for $2 per capita, you will do a lot of good. Thank you.